news of the day. Well, we've heard the uh, panel's thoughts on the odds of this game. 80-20, that is very strong odds is to ever lay it? down. Yes, 80-20 to uh, the favor of TNC. BSJ was a little bit more hesitant. He had a little bit more faith in Gambit here. Uh, I do have to agree. I do like TNC's lineup um, from what we saw from them yesterday. The, they make this kind of stuff look really good. But do you agree with Kyle? 80-20? Is it really that big of an outdraft? No. I think Gambit's going to win. Oh! Are you saying that just so you can be on the opposite side of Kyle? No, I think they... Uh, I think, like, there's two ways to deal with um, Faces Void. Either you outpace him, mm -hmm. or where, like, it comes to the fact where if he pops a Chrono, he doesn't do enough damage, and then he's a useless hero, right? Yeah. Because Void is his Chrono. Um, so that usually means, like, you need a few conditions, like, if you pick Void. For one, you really need damage. Ooh, like, you need an outside source of damage for his mid-game. Because you need some other hero to carry you through the mid-game. And I think they have that. With Invoker, with the Marana, uh, with especially the Jakiro. Like, I think all these heroes are very good at supporting Void's DPS problems early on. Uh, plus, they don't really have a save for the Chronosphere. Well, we heard Blitz. He says it's a much more even game, and apparently so does the audience. The GG bad odds being a lot more even. Yeah, I'd say it's like 60-40 maybe, but like 80-20 implies that there's very little... Somebody got hard outdrafted. Yeah, I don't I don't know if I agree with that. There's certainly going to be the advantage of Gambit having this uh, good team fight combo in that they have the Chronosphere Invoker Jakiro Marana. You have a lot to lay into that Chronosphere. Same goes for a good Axe Call. Uh, so they've got really good elements to make up a good team fight around a chronosphere or a successful call you know and they do have some scary late game as well it means that you have to like if you're tnt i feel like you have to do really well in the lanes and yep. you need to always get the jump first well that that is um that is something that's always going to be true for offlane venomancer right is that you really do need to have a good laning phase they talked about it on the panel. They said, do not give this Venomancer a uh, a 1v1. Like the last time it was matched in TNC, KP was able to have a strong 1v1 and just dominated the first 25 minutes of the game with his Boots of Travel build. We'll see if he's able to do the same here against a Void plus Jikiro. Jikiro probably being one of the most adept supports at uh, challenging a Venomancer, I guess. I mean, yeah. he's ranged and he's tanky. He has he the ranged Ogre. Yeah. You know, they're just both fat. They have tons of HP to start. Jikiro's got 740. Ogre, in fact, only has 700, but it's Ogre's eight, like the preposterous eight armor. <laughs> yeah. Um, that really makes him such a good safe lane support. Let's see that. Poor Marana, who has uh, long had a little bit of damage issues. As you can see, starting out in 47. Dude, against KP's 8 armor, free game. he's like tickling March. Yeah, KP's having a free game right now too, by the way. Like, he's already level 2. Oh, oh. mid GPK. Oh, this feels really bad. Yeah. Having to waste half your mana already on Ghostwalk. Like, level 1 Ghostwalk, if you hover over it, it's 200 mana. That's yeah. actually so brutal towards mid lane. So that Jakiro's just not able to stop the Venomancer, huh? I mean, he he got the first two waves to be able to push in, got the levels. They're going to come back with a Fisher. They know Ghostwalk is on cooldown. It's a lengthy one. Armel will be able to get the toss up in the air to finish off the Invoker for first blood. This is a very nice rotation uh, by Tim's, recognizing there's no Ghostwalk. This is a free kill. And at the start of the laning phase, you know, if you just have to trade off regen in order to get solo experience, that's probably fine for a Venomancer. Now he's level 3, so he's getting into that very dangerous territory with a high levels of Poison Sting. I think they sort of mess up in this bottom lane. Share my like, I think the way that you win this lane is, unfortunately, Void probably has to sacrifice a little bit of his CS. Yeah. But my favorite thing is, like, when I'm a support, when my carry just runs at the enemy offlaner to begin, Yes. and you set the tempo of the lane, you burn off a lot of his regen, and you make it so that he can't approach a creep wave. Yeah. But Dream and FNG, it felt like they're way too comfortable in this lane. Just like, let's trade out farm. Yeah. And that uh, specifically could be a bit more on Dream. FNG's kind of done everything he can to try and challenge KP, but yeah. Dream 
The problem with this just hero is like, once you get levels and you don't immediately burst him, he just slows you and it's really hard to kill him at that point. Yeah. Because uh, it's just annoying to go for him. Like right now, this is what I'd like to have seen in the beginning, where they're just getting aggressive on him. They might still kill him if... I think he's, he's got a bash. Oh, he's got a bash. He's got another one. Little bit of body blocked and with the slowdown, KP's definitely dead. They don't even need a second bash out from Dream. So evening up the score now, one to one. See a top lane Shachala doing his uh, creep pulling shenanigans. Yeah, this is what I'd really like to see uh, in this bottom lane. Just if you're a support, you're not really sure, or if you're a carry, I should say, try to help your support establish lane control. Mm -hmm. This is very easily doable, especially when it's a two on one situation. When it's a one on one or a two on two, it's a little bit different. Like. The, the, the dynamics of it change a little bit. Most of the time, like, carries can't really contest nowadays. But if you're support, make life easy for everybody involved. Carmel dropping very low from a game coming in from Vampire and GBK. Saved by Tims. Tims, who did say that he would take the uh, 30 million or whatever from a TI win. What was it like? You never quit? play Dota again? You quit Dota? I think you, you like, you can only play Dota at like the 1k MMR level. I see. Would you take that? Dog, I'm a commentator. I'm not a Dota 2 player. I, I, I don't have a retirement fund like those guys do. I would instantly take that. Financial security? I'll become a League of Legends player. I'll save it for 30 million. I'm Sorry, sure chat. there's some guy in chat that's like worth worth that much money. Chat is honestly Please. awful of like huge chads that uh, have tons of cash. They'd be willing to sponsor that. If you guys hate Cap as a caster, this is how you get him out. Yeah, pay me. <laughs> me. I've been going for that deal ever since I joined joined Dota at the start. Just become. They're like, who's this guy? He's not Toby. Pay me to leave then. <laughs> yeah, that's why I'm coding casting, dude. Some dude gave me like forty-five dollars in a coupon to like Target. <laughs> I'm out. It wasn't even Target, it was Kmart, be honest. Oh boy. <laughs> uh, Shachalo is, I mean, you're talking about like getting free farm and uh, doing well for yourself in the lane. Venomancer is still being contested. Shachalo has the total free farm. March uh, left that lane pretty quickly. And as most supports kind of have to do, like once the axe gets level two, Maybe if you're a strong support, level three is when you finally have to leave the lane, but you can't contest oh. the axe. Oh, they do manage to stop his TP away. Not that they can actually kill him, of course. But yes, but it's mildly annoying. It, he has been inconvenienced. His farm is slowed down. He's going to have to walk over to the shrine. He's got 2,000 gold in the bank. Who the hell is using the courier this much? Somebody let Shotchlow buy some items, man. Let me just say, as an oh, nice kill. Pick up on the support while trying to secure the uh, the runes, which was top Radiant instead. Are oh. Axe, he can cut creep waves as much as he wants, but he cannot stop the morphling from being able to farm. This Venomancer, though, putting pressure on that bottom lane tower gonna take it super early it looks like uh try to protect the siege wagon as long as he could but over top lane gabby morphling's a pretty good hero to deal with axe i feel especially with the uh the morbid mask the yeah. problem with when you play axe in this kind of situation is like you're getting a lot but you're essentially giving this guy absolute free farm and uh a dead lane like he doesn't need any supports he yeah. can farm under his tower no problem there are a few there are a few carries that don't like this but morph you know, he doesn't hate it. It doesn't bother him in the least. Uh, you never have kill potential on him, and you just give him free XP up here. So you can't battle hunger harass him either. It's like... Yeah, you're just trading farm right now. Die. That's why... Uh... Shachalo is trying to pull to neutrals when he can. This bottom lane, they weren't able to do it with the first siege wagon. And I feel like that's... Uh... An important marker because it is difficult, I think, to finish off the tower without the siege wagon. Just because you're, uh, you're like 
very likely to either get the tower denied. You like want another core to rotate in to make sure this bounty does go in your favor. And that's where our male's gonna come in. He's gonna sneak by the tower, oh, pick up FNG, try and finish him off, but the Chronosphere does go down, not in time to be able to save the Jakiro. GPK though, in beautiful position with the arrow coming in from Excess Vampire as well. That is well comboed. We said there's a lot to lay into this Chronosphere. Our male is still not dead, and he does have wand charges, but I just can't imagine he's gonna get through all of this one. He's gonna get bashed eventually. They do get the tower, and KP, I believe, was the recipient of that tower bounty. He was indeed, but it does cost them two lives. Is this offlane Venom like broken or something? I don't, I don't get it. It just seems to work every game. Yeah. Well, I mean, when you already know the side lanes, I think maybe it is a little strong. I think that's the really important part, right? Yeah. You know what the side lanes are. There are some deficiencies to this hero, though, yes. namely that. He's an offlaner or a core that gives you no uh, way to start a fight. So you really need to compensate with having your four position be an initiator and your mid hero. Yeah, ideally. You like uh, and Venomancer. Fortunately, once you know the side lanes and you do win the laning phase, you are able to create the space that allows your four position to get that early blink dagger or whatever he needs. In this case, it's Tim's on the Earthshaker. He's going to be the one uh, trying to farm up where he can. Looks like he's going to be sitting mid. While Armel goes between jungling and ganking. They're pinging on this morph right now, but. I mean, they can't really do anything to stop this. He's pretty much just going to get free farm here for the time being. It looks like we're seeing the um, the Quas Wex build from GBK. Do you like that? Is it just because of uh, Morphling? Uh, it's not bad against Tiny either because you get a hard reset. Plus, what I think it's really for is to defend your mid tower. Mm. Like the Quas Wex build is really good if you want to have impact on an invoker and you can't just like sit down and farm. Uh, Eventually what's going to happen is if it's anything like the last game, KP is going to TP towards his mid lane at some point and he's going to try to take down that tower. You can just tornado reset. Venno doesn't, uh, Venno doesn't really do anything against that. KP already in position trying to protect this bounty rune and Shotslow. Oh, with the cold snap being used by Gabby there to oh, go stop well Shotslow. And the tornado. He did what he could to try and protect him, but uh, cold snap just not a long enough disable. Oh, and that's sick. Axe indeed did misjudge. I mean, this is something that I really don't think anybody else has the same kind of hold on. This, uh, this Venomancer, the way they draft it, when they pick it up, and then on top of that, KP's movements around the map. I mean, he's always there early to bounty runes. Yeah. Setting up wards and saying like, hey, you thought you were contesting this? Nope. I will say it feels really bad playing Axe versus this hero or one of those instant jump heroes because you're most likely not going to burst him. Yeah. And then you get put into a position where, you know, he just gales you, runs away, and you're this Axe just slowly walking at people or trying to get away. And there's no follow-up damage for you until you get like BKB plus like a four staff or something. Uh, so it makes it so that your Axe has to be a lot more item dependent. Because normally what ends up happening is like Axe calls, then he hungers one person and he's running really fast. Then he just makes his move, right? March. Really don't sure, want to have trying to get some aggressive vision down. He does manage to sidestep the arrow here, and they're going to back up. Knowing that Armel was around here, that may tip off March that they had vision of Armel coming. Yeah, and if you look at KP, he has made the exact same maneuver he did in the game against Liquid. He's going to come towards mid, try to pressure down this tower with his catapult. Uh, I'd really like to see them rotate to try to defend this, and it looks like they are, but they do have a sentry down, and Vampire's gonna realize that. But a kill on Gabby! That shouldn't have happened. No, I don't think that should have, but it looks like he managed to just, like, get on top of Gabby, get to call, and they threw everything they had, including the macro pyre, over the top to finish off the carry of TNC. 4-4, four 2,000 net worth lead for TNC as the uh, wall is being built by KP. Are those cracks He's setting up the wards on the other side of the uh, the mid lane, just trying to get some, some damage on the mid tower. You know what the worst part about this is? Is they don't really have heroes until the void gets really strong to deal with the wards. Oh uh, yeah. Uh, that's going to mean that their high ground is going to be really hard against this Venomancer. Just like taking towers 
going to be kind of a problem. Like, you saw that the Jakiro has decided to go for four levels of the Liquid Fire, but I actually think maybe he would have wanted to just go for the Ice Path, though. Because I actually think it's pretty annoying for him to deal with this. Like if KP smart, he's always going to be here in position, and he's going to force out this wave, and you're going to feel really useless as a Jakiro because you don't really have enough damage. That is, uh, I think almost every Jakiro I've been seeing lately has gone for the maxed out Ice Path build. So it is a little curious that FNG choose to go for this. Maybe he thought he would just have a better window to take some map control away from TNT before KP could protect. But yeah, this Venom is just like a walking black hole. You don't want to be wherever he is. Like dealing with the wards with the cores does not feel good right now. Tornado into Arrow. Nifty little combo there from Gambit secures another kill. They're just going wherever KP isn't. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody wants to deal with these wards, man. Yeah. It'll fall into a shot low to do that. He is going to try and pick up uh, uh, Hood, Phase Bracer, Magic Wand, Hood. So the full tanky build before he goes back to the blink. Or maybe not, actually. Looks like uh, he just has the Ring of Health and he's going to go for the blink dagger. He knows the initiation is all important here. Chronosphere being used to try and ensure the kill onto Armel. The arrow whiffs there. Armel does have enough mana to be able to toss away Dream. Dream does have to heavily commit, though, to be able to get this kill. And now underneath the Tier 1 tower, next to some stunners, could be in trouble, but they just don't have enough control, it seems. Excess Vampire now is going to be slowed down by the Gale from KP. He does have a lead charge. He does have another one, too, but he doesn't have the mana for it. So that'll be the trade-off. They had to use Chronosphere, but they get the kill on Tiny. Oh, look at mid. Yeah, he's getting the damage. He's using that liquid fire build. <laughs> they need, somebody needs to get here. He's almost got this. Well, maybe the FNG was right. He's gonna, that tower is gonna fall. It's probably gonna be denied. Ooh, that was a little close there. Nah, the fire was out there. Yeah, they put it out. All right. Marsh just put it out with his big club. They generally just... That's probably what an ogre would do. Tries to fix things by smashing. Well, that's one tower down. Let's see what else FNG can take here. I mean, this approach is definitely like, it's weird because as a five position, it means you kind of have to play away from your team in a way. Like, he was able to do that because his team was bottom, forced rotations, and FNG was just so low down the middle lane. They really want to kill him. They're in position right now. Uh, is KP being run around the map a little bit. Already out of mana. Feels like he's constantly out of mana, in fact. See him set up for the next round of bounty runes that are coming in. His net worth is really slowed down. Yeah. Once again, TNC are going to try and go for three. Vampire going to be shoved away here by March. And uh, looks like the aggressive play comes out from Gambit at the top side. Trying to go for the kill onto Armel. Armel with a toss back, but it's not good enough. The urn charge does finish off the tiny. And they're going to get the tower. Man, maybe and Gambit. Gambit's sick. Gambit has. I told you, man. Kyle is definitely on. I, I thought it was 60 40, but 80 20 is. Power is yeah, I don't think I've heard an 80-20 call from Kyle that's actually gone correctly for him. I'm, I'm not even, like, 80-20 means, like, he's, like, mad confident. It's, like, certain. Well, there's still a lot of game to play. There is a lot of we game to play. We have a net worth lead. 1k net worth, 2k now for Gambit. Nice ice path. There's no way to catch up to this guy. And there's still a very strong mid game for TNC, especially with this blink tanker from Armel, which he's going to use to get the toss back onto FNG. That pesky tower pushing five will fall. Blows him a kiss too. He knows how much they had to commit just to be able to kill a five position. That never feels that good. That's like, that's how fives win in a game, you know? Yeah. I you, know, you don't win really by killing people or taking towers for the most part. You win by dying under okay circumstances. All right, so we chill. Um, I guess we just, we just wait. We just wait until the morph gets uh, the Ags, because that's really, to be fair to Kyle, like, once the morph gets Ags, that's when the real game starts, right? Oh, yeah. I, this this whole, like, Venomancer thing, maybe it's not as successful as the last time we saw it, but 
At the end of the day, it's just a space creator for the real carry to come through. Do you think that um, this Morphling Axe can beat um, Faceless Void? Uh, I think it depends on what like the Void item timing is. Like okay. the Void has, is, I mean, they have almost the top three cores. Like Morph is obviously had because he had a free lane, but. Uh, I have to imagine, like, if Void gets a BKB, it's gonna be really hard for TNC to fight into this. Yeah. Uh, part of the problem with, like, having Tiny as a core, and especially, like, the new Tiny, is that so much of his damage, like, his one-shot damage has been nerfed. So it means that, like, Tim's has to have, like, the perfect follow-up. I think a lot of this game actually comes down more to how Tim's plays than uh, anything the rest of his team does. Because, like, the Tiny's gonna go in, try to burst down one hero. If it's the Void, he's got 1800 HP. You can't allow him to get the time walk off after that fact. And they don't have an offlaner that prevents that either, so they need to just, like, lay into him burst. And they have to do that all while avoiding the hard reset of the Invoker. Yeah. That's the hard part. That uh, is pretty hard. You have to you have to avoid getting tornadoed, because if the Void is given an opportunity to just pop BKB, turn around, Chrono you, I feel like the fight's over at that point. So that's really what it's gonna come down to, is, like, this initial team fight when the morph gets ags and the faceless void gets bkb well we'll have to see who comes out on top when the time does come but for now it's uh, just a kind of a pickoff game it's a slow farming game where people like armel are going to have the opportunity to move around the map look for kills unfortunately that invisibility doesn't net him a kill there at the top lane but it does find him something at the bottom where he tps over and kills the marana excess vampire surely gonna know about the defensive vision that is up from uh tnc yeah he was spotted all the way through yeah. and uh if you look at the ward vision on the side of on the side of um, Gambit, it usually tells you like how you want to play. Like wards give you a lot of info uh, as to like how a team is thinking. Okay. And it and in this kind of way, it feels like you protect your triangle. You know they want to. It feels like both teams are okay with farming. Like Morph wants to farm out his eggs, just get bigger. Uh, and Gambit is also perfectly okay with that kind of game. Like, well, Gabby's got it. Is it time to like smoke up and make the big plays or? I mean, surely, like, this, 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 uh, Aghanim Scepter is such a big power spike for you. It is, but link. if you're gonna do that, you have to smoke because you don't have any aggressive vision at all. That's, it's really interesting where both teams have passive vision and, like, both teams are okay with farming. That's why we have these, like, two highly aggressive teams. It's, like, 7 to 7 and 19 minutes. Yeah. You just don't have any aggressive vision, so all you're really doing is waiting for the enemy team to come into you. Well, FNG did tell Slacks that they were Oh, there's the Morphling initiation. They did right. smoke up between Tim's and Gabby, leading with one Fisher. Gabby follows it up with another. That was like 1400 HP instantly. When they got March. They're gonna find March. Nobody's here. It does net uh, Gambit. I really don't want them to lose their mid tower for free, though. Yeah. I think that's a pretty big mistake. So they're gonna pop the glyph as soon as they notice. Uh, of course, Invis. KP is on the hunt right now, but not gonna run into him, unfortunately. Does he get the catapult? Nice. Good shot. Wow. Just throw the needle perfectly. Again, though, that's gotta tip you off about some sort of vision. Yeah. Uh, so I'd imagine one of the two teams, if anything, I'd, depending on how close the Void is to Chrono and uh, BKB, it's got Chrono, but no BKB. I would think that TNC probably gets aggressive here. I'd sort of like them to smoke. They're not really in a position where they're waiting for a major item. Maybe they want to wait for the uh, the Manta first on the morph. Mm -hmm. But this game is really odd because normally you have one team pushing the issue. It's very rare that you see both teams are completely content with this kind of game. And we usually talk about the fact that if that's the case, then both teams obviously feel like they are good to be able to play games. Yeah, I think both teams think that they have the better late game. Have the better late game, and that's uh, it's rare, but we'll find out who's right. KP. I mean, for TNT, it could also just be a you know wait for a good opportunity. Yeah. They do have this, like, split pushing of the Venomancer with his boots of travel. They may be able to manipulate the map just enough to find an opening on Gambit. 
rather than just trying to you know, brute, for brute force it because we have this item. Let's go, let's fight them nonstop. Yeah, we still have almost exclusively defensive wards place. Nothing really on... Uh... Nothing yeah, the too defensive aggressive. ward thing really gets me. The fact that, like, both teams are just like, ah. Gotta watch out for those smoke gigs coming our way. The problem is the Mirana tried once, right? Yeah, that's true. To try to get, like, something going, and then I think Vampire learned, like, never again. Yeah. And the only time they're getting kills are on, like, these supports that step out across the map. By the way, March is up here completely alone. They're gonna get the chain set onto the spaces point. Are they gonna be able to blow up in time? One shot from Gabby just in time before the Chronosphere or the Time Walk could go off. Oh. He gets off the Time Walk or the Chronosphere. He can activate the Shrine and then that fight could be very, very different. But TNC... He popped his BKB there too. Oh, did he really? He popped it at the end? Where did Radiance go? Yeah. Oh, oh no! I think he even turned like slightly to the side or he might have had time to Time Walk. That was... uh. Rough. Look at this. Gabby's in full control mode now with the gem. Oh boy. Thank you for, uh, thank you to KP for that one. That's so rough that that was his BKB too. Yeah. Radiance top tower has looked better. Well. All right. So we're going to go back to farm mode for Gabby. <laughs> Nah, I think they should probably take a fight. Uh, I think they realize off of that engagement they need to take the fight. They need to be the ones uh, starting things as the call. He literally just leapt from Ancients to his side of the river mid. Yes. Okay, cool. That's that's what the Morphling... I don't know why it does that. I don't know why Morphling needs more cast range. Well, like he already turns into another hero. Why do you why do you have to make him a hero plus? Have you seen him with ogre? One ogre with the ogre eggs and all that. Oh yeah. You get like ten thousand range, and you just you also get the second stun. So you can if your ogre has an axe too, you can literally just perma stun somebody in place. <laughs> it's actually hilarious. They can't do anything against it. Gabby, three man Fisher into the back line. He goes for the follow up Fisher out from Tim. Not quite enough to finish up DPK until the echo slam is there. They immediately retreat, and that's the beauty of this kind of lineup, is that you can go in, get a pick off, and so easily get out afterwards. Get to show up with four heroes, but by the time they do, TNC's already gone. They're way in the win. All right, you know what? Kyle's a genius. It was 80-20. This, this combo's insane. Well, right now the score is 8-10 to 10 with a 3,000 net worth lead for TNC. So with these pickoffs, on these cores, they're not uh, getting themselves a gigantic net worth lead. Gambit is still able to farm up, but Gambit needs to show a little bit of teeth here. They need to show that they can actually step to and get a kill. And that's going to be leading out on KP. KP does get tossed away. A beautiful play by oh Armel. Right at his time, waited until Tim's TP'd in before he blinks in to save KP's life. That was just beautiful. Oh, that was so well done. And now Vampire's got to be careful because Gabby with the fissure. After Fisher, like how do you stop this? They go for the four step. He does manage to get the time lock away. Excess Vampire hits a point blank arrow onto Tim's. Now Dream is holding on to his BKB for now. He wants to make sure he's not getting baited out here. The Sun Strike gonna miss, but March probably still to die here. The Battle Hunter's also taking out on him. They do manage oh, they to Dream to finish off Dream. Now with Dream dead. Oh, Gabby knows it is fighting time. Once he is dead, he's gonna be able to jump forward, get the kill onto the Mirana. Controlled up by the Axe and FNG's Ice Path to fall, but it's not that much of a deal. After all, he can turn into this Earthshaker and jump a billion range, ignores the Jinkiro, goes straight for GPK's Invoker, now turns back into the Invoker. Now he's going to chase over to the Axe, who's like 2,000 units to the left. But hey, there's Gabby. He's everywhere. This is the greatest thing I've seen. They're just, uh... It's like some really cool magic trick is being played on Gambit. Oh man, I, you can see that Dream is so confused. He just like, he's walking around the map. If you play a perspective of him, he's trying to look for angles to Chrono. But Gabby, I mean, he's hopping around. 
I mean, this is getting a little embarrassing for Gambit at this point. Like, you haven't used your Chronosphere in, like, the last six or seven minutes. I think it's been longer than that, Cap. The last time they used Chrono, it's... And they've had this BKB, which he popped with, like, that quarter second. That felt terrible. Then they go for the smoke because, I mean, they're still their timing is still alive. But they're just not able to find the initiation. Uh, and it's TNC that's just kind of walking up on them over and over again. I mean, this is great. I don't even, I don't, I, I can't tell if this is broken or not, so I don't want to, like, say that. I'd say that TNC are playing very well. Like, the synergy between their morph and their, um, their earth is, like, sick good. Don't worry about it. I'll say it for you. It's broken. I, I shrug, you, you crazy. I will say, like, if you're able to first two this and, like, consistently win games, that's pretty nuts. I mean, the cast range is, is pretty insane. But yeah. the mana cost reduction? All right. So you get to be two heroes longer than any other anybody else could do that? You know, I thought it was like 60-40 in favor of TNC, but I'm deaf being wrong. I, I guess this is just a thing. 80-20 it is. 80-20 it is. As we're gonna see, see here that. again. One more time. That's, That's not even, I wanted to see the death Yandy. on Dream. Like that, like just the life drain from his eyes. So he doesn't know what to do because every time this guy lands on you, it's like a mini echo slam because it does when he right clicks you after it's like a thousand damage yeah and like they just chain stun you for almost five seconds from like 1600 range okay that's too much thousand range from the fisher smoke up from tnc he's gonna run to fng fng does manage the ice path they also have the arrow follow up they're gonna go for the call follow up on top of that now the chronosphere on three but they do not have control of gabby gabby he's immediately going for the kill on a gpk but he misses it and thanks to the moonlight they're finally he's doing it get away and gambit will win the fight they not only get those three but tnc well oh no gabby's coming back in he does manage to get the two minutes in with the fisher trying to go for dream dream hoping for a bash time walks away a little bit farther and chan told him straight up in the air force that oh, so wrong it's so much damage Gabby's just gonna be able to get that kill on Shotzilla as well. That's the three cores dead. Gabby got every single one of them. Now he'll go for the kill on Excess Vampire inside of his face. Are they gonna call it? Like, that was literally 1v5. His entire team died. There was a buyback, but like, he just kind of went in anyways. He felt so confident. Uh, the funny part is, it's very rare in Dota to see a 1v... It was a 1v4 after he killed the Invoker. And they were actually actively running from him. <laughs> yes. Straight up, it's just insane. Poor GPK, like, he's immediately targeted every single time. And he's just trying to juke Gabby. But Gabby has too much mobility. We'll see that one one more time as right, Gabby came back in after killing GPK. So and now it's a 1v4. Tim's has popped back, but they're all just running away. It's a uh, full retreat mode. None of them, I think they correctly assessed that they were not going to win that fight anymore. I mean, this is why we saw Beast Coast draft uh, a Bloodseeker against this. Because then, at least... You limit the, the mobility? BKB, yeah, the BKB yeah. Morphling as an Earthshaker is totally win? invulnerable. Yeah, they, they dumpstered it really hard. Oh, sweet. Who'd they play? Uh, Virtus Pro. Oh, okay. Cool. Oh, man. It's, um... It reminds me of just, like, a horror movie, you know? Like, this guy's just running at you. The Terminator. Yeah, what can you do? Is that unstoppable force just keeps on coming at you no matter what? Beep boop. You can't run. You can only hide. But Gabby. Gabby can look everywhere. Thanks to Enchant Totem. Very freely, he can jump into any nook and cranny. I will say that at least it's entertaining to watch. There are some combos that look really good that are just like boring, mm -hmm. but there's really something about being a five position support and getting hit by a literal Mac truck. Radiance bottom tower's got problems. <laughs> like he's, he's farming all the ways, he's killing the towers, and he's still there for the team fight. TNC literally just kind of sit around a general area that Gabby wants to play in. I mean, my man's just straight up looking like Tarzan. He's just everywhere at once, killing everything. 
swinging through the vines, swinging through the trees. He is so scary. Watch out, here he comes. Oh boy. You can tell how afraid. I've never, Gambit are not showing anywhere on the map because they realize if this guy gets within 1200 range of us, <laughs> he's gonna fissure us and then we're all dead. He's some sick combination of like the boogeyman plus what's the, the Russian version of the boogeyman? Every single urban legend about some sort of monster is just all rolled up into one. Oh boy. I mean, I'm entertained. There's... There's something about it. He literally does like plus 1,000. He's trying to do Roshan by himself right now. The arrow's gonna come in. Hit Rosh. And Dream. Okay, that is his invis breaking and spotted by a ward. Immediately TNC. Just start running at them. Yeah, what's your play right now? Gambit, you've got to, uh, I, if you had another arrow. Oh, the arrow hit. Okay, put a four staff out of the pit. That is not going to feel good if you're Gambit. They thought they had an opportunity and then they instead. The one who's going to die here, force out the BKB from Armel at least. They're going to retreat. Does have a buyback. I think you pop it, most likely. <laughs> he blinks back into it. He blinked to dodge it, only to tank a not an even longer. Well, fortunately, he's tiny and he's got 2,700 HP, so I get him back in the pit. I feel like you have to buy back if you're. Well, FNG doesn't have buyback anymore, so he bought an item. Oh, okay. I'm not sure what happened there. March. He bought a board or something. That March is there to be able to tank uh, some arrows. Make sure Gabby's gonna be okay. Tall Fisher, HP and Chan told him stuff. Oh, no, that's gonna be the same dream. But he time walks backwards. Now he's gonna go for the Chronos. Do they have him down the air? They've got him down. Gabby's finally gonna fall. The Boogeyman is dead. And now Gambit can finally take a fight. Oh, no, he oh, no, he's back. back. Retreat, retreat, retreat. retreat. Get out. Everybody out. Dude, peace. That is their rose shot now. That's okay. Oh, Lord, he's coming. Oh, Lord, he coming. Arrow on its way will hit Tim's, but let's be honest, Gambit, they should really just sit in their base at this point. Without Kronos here, they cannot fight Gabby. Okay, okay, okay. They reset it a little bit. Yeah, so like now TNC have to, um... Uh-huh. They've got to... Yeah. They've got to play around the Sages. Yep. There is an opportunity then for, for them to potentially... Oh, okay. Um, there's no Kronos here, though, for... 85 seconds. The really wait sick part of this is, is that like, you can kill Gabby and like maybe you take away his Aegis, but you can't run far enough. That three seconds of him reviving, like you cannot get out fast enough. He will track you down. Radiant's middle tower is under attack. Radiant's middle tower has fallen. Oh, there's another one. Liam Neeson. Gabby's got a... Yeah. He's got a certain set of skills. Arcane 14 to 20, 35 minutes in. <laughs> Gambit are all inning on one bounty rune right now. And GPK will manage to stay away from March, but he's been stunned up. Armel not able to get the avalanche. A good defensive four staff coming out. But here comes Gabby, and he's already spotted GPK thanks to the gem that he always has in his hands. He's going to be able to make sure the invoker dies oh, first yeah. as Always, it's pretty much a tradition at this point, and uh, they'll get FNG as well. Meanwhile, Dream is like literally just trying to cut creep waves wherever he can. Fortunately, the Fisher does not stop his TP otherwise. <laughs> Jesus. All right, now he's got an arcane rune too, so he's pretty much got the perma leap going. Dude, dude, they're gonna run down, um... So they have to somehow kill him twice. Yeah. I, I feel like if you lead with the Chrono, you're gonna lose the fight. But I don't really know what the solution is either. It means that you've gotta get a Dream Game. Okay. Oh, with the Blade Mail and the arrow. the arrow Macro Pyre. If they can somehow bring him down without using Chrono Sphere, it'd be great, but it looks like they're gonna have to here. Oh no! He got hit by the picture! He didn't pop his BKB! Now he gets it off! He actually gets a beautiful oh, no. Chains done onto Gabby that they desperately needed there. 
there because oh, the Eon no. Dish protecting Tim's means that nobody died on TNC. Dude, all they lost was the Aegis. Tim's didn't have buyback. That could have been such a big opportunity for them. He was he was stuck in place. Okay, all right. Well, somehow the man may be a better uh, better techies than he is a Marana. You don't see that very often for a four position. <laughs> They're gonna slowly lose this range racks to uh, <laughs> they can do deny, deny, deny. Oh come on! You gotta get that deny. All right, so they should just fight again. TNC, there's no chrono now. Uh, there isn't an Aegis, so maybe they're a little bit afraid. Tries to quickly execute X as vampire, but uh, as as things go, they managed to find the initiation. The arrow, the, the arrow does manage to land this time on the board, but he's already straight for it, so he is very hard to eat through. Gabby immediately turns into a void. Oh no, he's going to be able to jump away. Earthshaker's out, and with that, TNC will be able to retreat unless this arrow. No, it doesn't land. TNC taking out once again, losing nobody, and this time they got the melee bear. Bottom tower needs some well, an Agonim Scepter for the Invoker, at least. That is uh, something that's a little different for Gambit. Do they have, uh, what level is our Invoker? God, he's 18. I was like, he's got to be close to the Cataclysm, but no. Because every fight, he's the first to die, so he just doesn't get any experience. And he's got a blink dagger, so I think that's his way of trying to separate from the team fights. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because normally you can play around Ghost Walk, but maybe... All right, here's the play, right? You let this morph get so farmed that eventually he has to drop the gem. I just let him get six slotted. I don't think that he's going to do that. Because he can consume the Aghanim Scepter first. Just... Just let him get six slotted. You mean just let him get nine slotted? Just let him get consume his Aghanim Scepter, get another item, consume Moon Shard, and then another item after that, and he'll have to drop gem. Yes, sir. But I don't think he will, because I think he likes his life the way it is. I think he likes hunting down Invoker. To be fair, I don't think he fight. should actually... Um, he should try to drop it as late as possible. It's actually so huge. The fact that there's literally nothing they can do against it right now. <laughs> okay, blind arrow just thrown out. Just managed to find Tim's. So Gambit knows that they're smoked up and they're heading this direction. They're willing to try to break the smoke here. Vampire, did he just land another arrow on Tim's? Yeah. Gabby's saying, well, if you're going to hide up in that high ground, I'm just going to go for Megas at this point. You're going to be forced to defend at some point. With Chrono, with the Satanic, maybe they've got a shot. There is still a window where uh, Gabby doesn't have the buyback, and that's really what they're concerned about. They're trying to get that window as close as possible, so even if he dies, there's no like mad scramble down mid where they get Mega Creep or anything like that. Yeah. So they probably wait out at least like 40 more seconds, and then they'll... And they could also just wait out the next Roche. It may respawn in only a minute, minute and a half. That's not that bad. You have so much map control. I just don't know when things change for Gambit. Like, maybe if the Invoker was co close to Cataclysm. Uh-oh. Shot has been yes, found. Yes. He is going to be used after Double Fisher coming out. Defensive Force Staff, Force Staff 2 coming out as well. And they don't want to continue to chase that. That's the right idea if you're TNC. Uh, but you do have the level 20 now on the Invoker. Oh, he's got it now? Yeah, yeah. Things okay. have changed. And he's picked up the Cataclysm. Okay, so you get the, the right kind of Chronosphere. And he's been getting some good Yeah, and he's about to finish an Aeon Disc, too. Like the situation is sort of improving for Gambit. Dyer's bottom tower is under attack. Really, where the well? Do you, part do, of you uh, do you buy Aeon Disc or do you just keep buyback? You probably keep buyback, right? Yeah, because they're kind of the same thing. Yeah, you for... double your net worth here by just you know buybacks, the best.
heart for our Mel. Gracious. 4,300 HP. He doesn't even have the Aghanim Scepter yet, so that's going to be his next item. For some tree volleying. In TNC, this is something that they've been really good at is just controlling the game and not throwing away the lead that they have. Very patient, this team. I, I, do you think this is March's influence? Probably. Uh, I think that's probably what they were missing. Like, all the skill is there for TNC. Mm -hmm. They probably just need a little bit more direction, which is why I think they look so much better with Heen. Yeah. But like, you know, he's not in game with them. So there's only so much you can change, but somebody like March, I think, helps control the dynamic of the team a little bit more actively. Yeah, and KP is obviously another very experienced player, a veteran voice. Twenty-two thousand net worth lead for TNC. That's what they're holding on to. That's why we're talking about them being patient because they've got two lanes of racks down. They've got a oh, just arrow. Huge lead. Invis picked up, but as we know, not the most effective of runes. Okay, Moonlight Shadow, Gambit, are I gonna push out here and TNC is split? Yo, it worked! There's no longer a gem on the morph! I told you! <laughs> you get too big! This it's was the only way to win instead! Gambit! Dream. Oh, Gambit are geniuses! They get into this fight! They're gonna pop a, a, just a Sunstrike, not a Cataclysm. If they use Cataclysm, they would have seen that TNC is very split right now. It is a three and two setup. Granted, that is Tim's Zero and hits. Gabby. Okay. Who could very quickly get to this side of the map, but. Another four staff. This is gonna be the third four staff for Gambit. Or excuse me, that one was uh, picked up by March, rather, so. Yeah, and indeed they are waiting for the next Roche. They do have the buybacks, but they're just kind of being tossed up there. Well, now they have buyback on uh, on FNG, I guess, so he can do that. Not be afraid of dying. Cause, uh, he's got the buyback. Gabby is going to pick up the haste room and go into that Roshan pit. Do you think you take this fight here? You gambit? Yeah, yeah. I mean, if anything, this is even better than defending your base in a way, right? Because if you do manage to win this fight and you manage to take away oh, that Roche, no. get out of there, FNG. So much cash. Oh, you could see it, whether it's the Fisher coming out from Tim's, the Fisher coming out from Gabby, or it's the blink initiation from Armel. One misstep from one of these supports, or he honestly even core. They very quickly get one shot and picked off GPK. He may be next in line as he has been Echo Slam to make sure he stays in place. Tim's though has run out of stuns. His allies were just a little bit slow to get there in time. So uh, that's an ultimate use they got. But yeah, apparently they're just gonna go for bounty runes instead of contesting the uh, the Roshan Sun Strike. Quite gonna be there in time to snatch the kill. So Aegis and Cheese. And a 24,000 gold lead. <laughs> yeah. And uh Scotty. This morph needs more damage cap. <laughs> yeah, does he? Uh, what do you want me to say, man? He he needs more everything right now. There is a Aeon disc picked up on GPK now, and now that the gem is outside of the Morph's hands, mm -hmm. we had, uh... That's a positive. Yeah. It's actually such a big thing for, um, GPK's game. Otherwise, right now, every single time, the fight looked the same. Gabby just slams on top of him, he dies in two seconds. Then they're playing without their mid-hero. I'm <laughs> just like... I'm just a little bit befuddled because I'm so very certain that TNC could just brute force that bottom lane, but they're being so careful about it. Oh, look at this. And eventually they're going to get the pickoff that finally says, okay, with Aegis and Cheese and a pickoff, we can go hike. Hey, they managed to get the Aeon disc away from Tim's. Okay, nice. That's uh, step one. Oh, that's not nice. 
because the way TNC is playing right now, they may just wait for that Aeon disc to come off cooldown before pushing high ground. Arrow after arrow. No, oh, it hits again for like the fourth arrow he's hit, but they can't do anything with it. Now, one Fisher, two XS Vampire for staff got him away from that enchant totem jump in from Gabby. They're not even trying to, they're literally not even trying to dodge these. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's one way to uh, establish some dominance. They do have a uh, level 25 coming in very soon for this spaceless void. And that is massive if you manage to backtrack and enchant totem hit. From the Morphic Colin, they're going to be able to find the initiation on Armel, who's super tanky. The Meteor's going to be able to bring down about three quarters, but oh, then Dream's going to be yeah. easy. Jumps forward, Dream's going to be easy. The Rana looks like he should be able to get shot as well. No, for that, gets him back into the fountain. Dream with no chrono scare to be able to find Gabby. He needs to pray for chain stuns here, and he's not going to be able to get it either. He does have a buyback, but Gabby, oh, a man to dodge on the call from shot so he can keep on swinging on a GPK with Tim's hitting a three man echo slam. Just the cherry on top for TNC as they just walk on Gambit. They establish very clearly. Was an 80 20 victory. Ooh. More than doubled them in kills. Rough game. That is a rough game. I mean, Gabby probably at the time of his life. Yeah.